What's up guys, Econ John here. Welcome to a new video series on endogenous growth models. In this video, we're gonna give an overview of what endogenous growth models are and talk about the R&D model. Let's go. In this video series, we will be providing an overview of two key models of endogenous growth, which are discussed in David Romer's Advanced Macroeconomics. These two models are the research and development model and the human capital model. Though these models are different, they both illustrate ways in which new technology and ideas are created in the economy instead of being exogenously assumed. Till now, we've been considering models where our growth rate of technology, G of A, is already assumed to be a certain value or exogenously determined. In endogenous growth models, we determine what our growth rates of technology is as a function of labor and capital stock at a given point in time. In this video and the next one, we'll be focusing on the research and development model. So as before with the solo model, the research and development model is a model of the economy, which is described by a set of equations. In this model, however, there are two separate sectors, an R&D sector and a goods producing sector. The equations are the first one being our goods producing sector, our second one being our R&D sector, or it could be referred to as our technology accumulation equation. Our third equation is our capital accumulation equation which is described by SY, right, which is our savings of our output at time T, right? Our depreciation rate here is assumed to be equal to zero. And our third, fourth equation is our population growth equation, right? Where N is our population growth rate. The parameters in this model are recognizable from other models. The only unique ones that we go and see are AL and AK, which denote the proportion of labor and capital allocated to research, as well as B, which is a backshift operator. This tells us that uh, that growth in technology is now dependent on previously existing resources. So really, it just means that instead of T, right, go and do T minus one, right, in all these equations. That's it. It's just one period before. That's what is determined by. Let's talk about the dynamics of knowledge without capital. When there is no capital in our model, our goods producing sector and our R&D sectors become the following. Y of T is equal to AT times one minus AL, right? Which is our proportion of labor uh, dedicated to research, right? Times our labor stock at time T. And our second equation, which is our R&D sector, right? Is B, which is our backshift operator times AL, right? Which is the proportion of labor uh, dedicated to it, raised to the power of gamma, times AT raised to the power of theta, right? These are all output elasticities or factors that go and contribute to uh, you know, the evolution of technology, right? From 2A, we can derive the growth rate of technology as the following, right? If we were to take the logs of both sides of this equation and differentiate it with respect to time, we get our equation of interest over here. This is gamma n plus theta minus one times our growth rate in technology. If we were to rearrange equation six from the previous slide, we would obtain our main equation of interest, this being our growth rate transition equation of technology, right? This is equal to gamma n times our growth rate of technology at time p plus theta minus one times our growth rate at time t squared. Using this equation, we can analyze the dynamics of growth and evaluate if there exists a long run growth rate of technology or if our system is explosive. To see if this is the case, we have to look at the value of our returns from technology parameter theta. The three cases which we'll look at are theta being greater than one, theta being less than one, and theta being equal to one. For theta being uh, greater than one, we're unable to analyze since our system is explosive. There is no long run uh, growth rate of technology for this. Uh, for theta being less than one, right, we solve for where our growth rate transition equation for technology is equal to zero. After a little bit of algebra, we'll go and come to equation eight, where our long run growth rate of technology is equal to gamma n all over one minus theta. For theta being equal to one, we simply use equation five and solve it right where our growth rate of, of uh, technology right this is in turn our long run growth rate of technology is just dependent on the proportion of labor dedicated to our r d sector 
For this last slide, uh, I just want to provide a visual of what these transition equations go and look like, right? Just going and graphing how if theta is less than one, right? We have convergence to a long run growth rate as denoted by the star over here. If it is equal to one, right? We just have a really just a straight line coming out from the origin. And if it is greater than one, right? It's, we're gonna have this nice convex shape just going up. So. That's the first part in this four-part video series. I hope this video helps. Leave a comment and let me know what you thought.